அன்பிற்கும் அன்பாகி அன்பற்ற அகம் தன்னில் அலை காற்றின் அன்புற அன்பூற்றி Hello and welcome. My name is Candice and I'm with Circle on the Square Holistic Life Center and I have the wonderful pleasure and blessing to interview Atma Nambi. We have been blessed this weekend with uh, workshops and initiations with Atma Ji. May I? And um, so we thought that it would be really, really wonderful to share his work with the rest of the world. Um, and so we're going to start with some questions and an interview and in introducing Atma to you. And, um, and I guess I'll just begin. Um, so Atma Ji, we were... One thing we were wondering is, what does Atma Nambi nam mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. The meaning of uh, Atma is self. Nambi means trust. Trust in Atma. <laughs> That's why Atma Nambi. And Atma is a name that was given to you. Yeah, it's given by the given by the divine. And Atma is similar to Atman. Atman. Yes. Yeah. And that means self. Yes. Is it also a level of self? Because, like, we have. Um, Somebody that we know about here is Mahatma, Mahatma. Gandhi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you speak to Atma and Mahatma? <laughs> it's, you know, everyone is Atma, but for him, people love him very much. So when the love is overflowing, we will find new, new words to call someone, you know. So, when there is no word to find out to try someone, and we have to choose a name, that's how this Mahatma, nothing more. How can he say nothing, nothing more? That's the highest, ultimate way of loving someone. That's why it is Mahatma. Maha in the sense, the biggest, the ultimate. Is that an aspiration for you as well? No, I don't have any such thing. <laughs> I'm very happy of, of this name. <laughs> okay, yeah. so, so Mahatma yeah. was given yes. to Gandhi. By people. By people. Started calling. All right. Well, it was kind of curious to me because of the root word in Sanskrit yeah, and what it yeah, means true, and true, Atma and true. Nambi. So, Atma Nambi is trust yeah. in the self. self. Tell me what you mean by self. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Again, it's a name given to something which can't be explained, which can't be defined. We can say nearer to what is self. Self means beyond mind, beyond intellectuals, beyond thoughts, beyond emotion, beyond body. What is beyond all these things? We say self. That means that's the source of all. That is a source. From that source, the thoughts are arising, emotions are arising, all things are manifesting over there from the root, from the source, that which is called self. So that 
this self is is this self pure pure there is no way to corrupt it also it's always pure so like in this country we sometimes we talk about um, higher self mm. yeah it's one and the same you know when you say higher self super self all these things just for a word play mm -hmm. self is a self you know it's pure always it's pure there is a saying in vedanta that which can't be cut down that which can't be wet that which can't be blown up you know that which can't be fired is self nothing can touch it is unaffected that which is unaffected is called self whether we call it super self or higher self or that's true self true self doesn't it much one and the same it's different people call different names oh. the truth is same okay thank yeah. you yeah. we have our idea of self you know i'm candace and i live in springfield missouri and i have um some children and I'm a counselor I have these different roles and I've had this lifetime as Candace is that self different than the self the atma yeah this is personality okay. what you mention now is personality outer cover of the self you know the name is given for the form when you, when you when you are inside your mother's womb there was no name for you name came later isn't it you were existing but still no name for you candace name has been given after you were born isn't it so all these things the names the forms the identification the home address identity family children relationship all these things related to personality the cover of the self self is nothing to do with all these things is that what people in in um i know in buddhism they refer to uh, the ego but then also in western psychology we have the idea of ego and false ego mm -hmm. is that ego mm -hmm. this other yeah. is the yeah, yeah. make up a personality a name and yes. form yes yes see when we call ego the moment we start identifying with the personality it's only a question of identification if one starts identifying with the form with the name with the status with the power the ego is arising otherwise there is no place of ego if one is totally aware that I, it is my role as a mother as a sister as a wife these are all just changing roles if one is aware of this thoroughly there is no question of ego if one starts attaching with this identities this kind of external things personality and the ego starts coming ego means deviating from the self oh. is, is that where suffering comes in that is exactly the suffering starts the starting point of the suffering is the ego the starting point of ego is the starting point of suffering the wrong identification deviating from the self from the true self starts giving a false idea even the suffering is a false idea there is no such thing the ego the mind thinks that it is suffering it's not so the truth is just a deviation and and in your life you realize this 
did did you know from the from the beginning or did it did you gradually mm -hmm. in your learnings come to realize that yeah see it was there it was there like everyone but it was fully actualized one point of time fully actualized fully flowered on one point of time when i was 39 year old that is 22 years now it was completely actualized 100% that's what i can say in your process getting to the 100% yeah. full flowering Did, how did you know it was 100% full flower? <laughs> yes, now I can say it is 22 years are gone now. <laughs> Surely it is 100%. Uh -huh. yeah. Just because of the experience. When, you, when that happens, you know. Yeah, when it happens, you know. When you are joy, you know that you are joy. There is no proof. There is no need of any proof. You know it. Same thing. I know it. And no doubt. Yes, no doubt. Does the ego yes. doubt? Yeah, it is separated. The mind is separated. Mm -hmm. The ego is separated. The personality is separated. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, is this available to all of us? Yes, it's available to everyone on the earth. It's only question of recognizing. It takes no second and live it. Recognizing and live it is the keys. And how? How does one? That's probably a big question. How does one? go forth in recognizing it and living it. Just, just to see one's own life. For example, when we are sleeping, every day everyone is sleeping. At the time of sleeping, we don't have the remembrance of the body or the mind or the whatever we discussed now, the personality is no more. But there is always something which is not last, existing all the time, even while during sleeping also. But when you are waking up the next morning, naturally all the memories are coming back. The mind is creating the memories. So, just looking into this phenomenon, a sleeping phenomenon, what's happening during the sleep is enough for recognition. recognition. One can recognize it. Who am I? How do we do that, looking at a sleeping phenomenon? Yeah, that's enough. That one incident is enough. That will give you a glimpse that who you are. That means you are not the thought, you are not the mind, you are not emotions. Beyond all these things, there is something deeper. That must be you. Because that is permanent. All other things are temporary. For example, thoughts. Thoughts are very temporary. They come and go. They visit you. But who is that you? Which is, the you is permanent. Isn't it? That which is permanent must be you. That which are visiting can't be you. So there is something permanent under. Yes. yes. All In of the, the changing thing. Yes. There are changes, always changes. But inside the changes, there is something always permanent. Now we have to recognize, am I the changing one or the permanent one? How do you help people to access that, the permanent? Yeah, simple. The meditation is a way, meditation is the best tool. If one starts meditating, one knows, one gets totally identified with this self. 
because when meditation, when someone is meditating, the evaporation of thoughts and minds and everything happens. But it comes to a point that there is something permanent which can't be taken away. That's a reality. So, I think people have a challenge with meditation or not sure how to meditate or yeah. they try and they say, I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Then they stop and then... Yeah. There is always, you know, the right way of doing things and the wrong way of doing things. One has to select the right way of doing meditation. I call it is a right meditation. If someone is introduced the right way of meditating, there is no way of uh, saying like this that uh, meditation is not coming to me, it's not for me, all these things will not happen. That's why I always say before meditation, just undergo introspection. Introspection is the first step before meditation. Introspection means just be alone in the room, in your home or wherever you would like to sit. Sit alone. Just look into your mind. Watch your mind. Find out what's happening. What kind of flow of thoughts are going on day in and day out. Find out. Probably you can note down also. If you note down four or five sitting, you will know. The same old repetition of thoughts are going on in time. You know, we are always engaged with that. Why one has to be engaged with that? Why don't we liberate it from that? So that introspection, that is studying our own mind, studying our own emotion, studying the temporariness around us, is the first step, will be the first step should be the first step. Once you understand this step, then you go for little preparation. Preparation is physically, you can prepare your body, maybe doing some physical yoga, maybe some little exercises here and there, you know, having a nice food and having a wonderful lifestyle, living style. And that's a preparation for the physical body. The physical body preparation is very much important. Because meditation, in meditation one has to sit for 15 minutes, half an hour, something like that. The body has to cooperate, you know. The cooperation is must from the physical body. So it, we have to prepare it, preparation. And maybe you can go, undergo some kind of breathing exercises, namely pranayama or something like that. That will settle down your mind. Then you close your eyes. Then you meditate, then meditation will come just like that. It will not be a struggle, it will not be a war. You will love it. And once you have the glimpse of bliss or happiness, which is bound to happen during meditation, that single experience, one experience of bliss, the glimpse, is enough. Once one tastes that, afterwards one loves to meditate. No one can stop it. It's such an interesting factor. Then meditation will be a life. It will be a permanent phenomenon. Afterwards one need not do any particular techniques or anything. One starts living as meditation throughout life. I think this is a process of progressing in meditation. If a person is totally fed up with all the mind and this flow and all this kind of mind disturbance, thought disturbance, suddenly if you ask that person to meditate, it will be very difficult. So best way to introspect first and then prepare and then meditate. Once you meditate, then meditation sets in because our nature is meditation. Meditation is not a new phenomenon for anybody. We started our life in a silent way in the mother's home. 280 days we are meditating before we come to the earth, isn't it? That experience is still there. 
you know, it's not a new phenomenon. Meditation will set in for everyone. One has to follow the right procedure, right way of starting things. Of course, for some people suddenly meditation is that setting. I'm not saying to all they have to introspect, prepare and all. Some people suddenly when they close eyes, they go into trance. But not by all. Because everybody is different in their mindset programming. It depends on the program of the mind. More it is strongly programmed, they need a lot of preparation to set in meditation. Till they get the first glimpse of joy, of happiness, of silence, then they come to go away from meditation. They love meditation. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I think I think sometimes people fear the mm. silence. They mm. fear like mm. like that silence mm. is like maybe nothing, like death, mm. as opposed to bliss. Mm. Do you think? Yes, uh, some people, yes. Some people, they have this experience of uh, fear. When they go deep into meditation, suddenly the noise of the mind is reduced and there comes a point, a noiseless, you no, know, a peace is occupying. That moment is a fearful moment for some of them because it's something unknown, forgotten for long. So suddenly, when a person is thrown into such a silent zone, it's such a shock-like, you know, that may create a fear. But one need not worry about these kind of small fear-like traces or shades. One can boldly travel into, because that silence is bliss. Silence is not a dry experience in meditation, in no mind situation. It's such a juicy experience. As many people think that wrongly, silence is not nothingness, it is everythingness. From silence, from the vacuum, everything arises out of it. So if you have this understanding rightly, we will love to travel into the silent zone. All treasures are there in the silent zone. That's interesting. It makes me, it reminds me of your name. Yeah. Yes. Trust in Atma. Atmanami. Yes. So it's a trust. So in those moments, it's all it's that we have to trust that it's yeah, going to yeah. be okay trust. on the other side. Yes. Or to cross that. Yes. yes. Cross the unknown. Yes. So when we are traveling in the aeroplane, we don't even see the face of the pilot, but we are enjoying the travel of the aeroplane. What is the background of it? We are just trusting the pilot that he will take us the right way without making any trouble on the way. So we are trusting the pilot. When you are traveling in the bus, we trust the driver of the bus. We don't even see the face of the driver of the bus. We trust many things. But when it comes to meditation, why we are afraid of? Why don't we, why don't we trust? That which is governing the whole process. Right, I definitely can trust that easier <laughs> than the <Yeah>. plane and Yes. <laughs> and uh, Absolutely. Yes. It's very but that's fast. a good point. That's yes. a really good point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it seems like so many self realized beings come from India and that we don't have any anywhere else. What do you think about that? I mean, is that true? Uh, I think it may be the uh, truth some years before. 
But now every country has got a number of uh, self-realized. <laughs> this is what my experience also. Everywhere people are emerging, emerging and realizing, realizing a lot and lot and lot. Because this is a time of mass awakening. Many people are awakening because so much awareness is going on. Of course, I agree with you. India is a very ancient country. You know. All the time, the land of India was giving the wisdom of realization, of liberation, of enlightenment, mukti, moksha, before, even before Gautam Buddha was born and flowered. I agree with you. That is the reason a lot of people in India, the numbers are very high, but doesn't mean that the other countries, they don't have this fortune of realizing. It's happened everywhere. Is that why you're coming around? Yeah, no other way, you know. When you are joyful, you always share that joy. <laughs> you can't keep quiet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> of course, yes. And this is your first time in the U.S.? Yeah, this is my first time. Different. So in your journeys, yeah. have you come across some other realized beings? Yes, I do. That's wonderful to hear. <laughs> yes. Is it, is it hard? Is it tough for them in other parts of the country? No, no. So India is very supportive and has the awareness of this self. Um, realization yes. and it's almost yes. built into the culture. Yes. But not so much in other places. Yes. That is true. <laughs> and so what happens when someone, are people waking up without necessarily under the guidance of the teacher? Yeah. And what happens to them? What do they do? Yeah. Is it, you know, I'm curious about how does the world support it, you know, when it's not, it's a new, it's a new ground. Yeah. I tell you, the fundamental culture of India, there were uh, days when someone is realized. The whole area or the whole country starts celebrating that. That's such a great celebration. So they feel it. Yeah, they feel the it. The other people in yes, that yes. area. The radiation of the vibration is felt by everyone. So they start celebrating that as a great event. And so they might not even know who it is. Yeah. But they feel they somebody. They feel it. They feel it. Wow, that's because, it, because the the realization of one person is not really realization of one person. It's realization of all. It's like when a flower is flowering, the fragrance is not only for the flower. It's for the entire area. Same thing, the flowering. And also it's quite interesting to know this. Even the kings in the olden days in India, they always consult to take decision for the country, for the ruling area, from the realized one. They always have advices of these people only. If some critical situation comes for the country to take a decision, they always consult with the realized one. What to do in this situation? Can you advise me? The king used to ask the realized one. Because the, only the realized one can give the right solution. 
What is realization after all? Realization means a complete clarity about the situation without any bias. So the king used to have the advices from them. That's the culture of India. Even now you can see the ministers, the ruling ministers, maybe chief ministers or prime ministers, you know, they always consult the realized one. They go to the ashram, meet the master there, they discuss about the critical situations prevailing in the country, what to, how to take a decision on this, they consult. They do advise them for the welfare of the people. Such a way, it's understood. The realization is understood in India. Of, of course, I agree with you. But I don't think that's the case in other countries, especially the Western countries. I think this awareness is very important. For example, yesterday, I all introduced the person, Lori. She has such a beautiful silence. This is a moment for us to celebrate that, taking care of her and all these things like that. I think this awareness has to come to Western world. If one is flowering, one has to be taken care of because the realist one becomes so delicate, so sensible. They are not the same like other beings. Their internal thing is entirely different. They become like a child again. So some people have to take care of them, to protect them and make use of that beautiful energy for the people around, not only really people around, but even for the whole nation. Such a way it has to be handled and maintained. This is very new here. Like a support so that they... Yeah. Because can they get hurt if they're not supported? Yeah, no, they are not hurting or anything. It's a delicate situation. For example, the child situation. I told you, like a child, what will happen? It will starve unnecessarily. A child always needs some helping hand because the mind is no more. The ego is no more. Look at the ego situation. Someone has to take care, like taking care of the plant or the flower. Isn't it? I think that is needed here. Mm -hmm. This awareness. Of supporting that. Yes. And celebrating. Joining in. Yes, yeah, joining in. You know, taking the help of that energy. <coughs> now all these things we have to focus on. It kind of speaks to the interconnectedness. Yes. So as opposed to yeah. suffering. Yes. They are in different world. Uh -huh. Their world is different. You know, because they don't have the time sense, they don't have the place sense. Even sometimes they forget to eat also. It's like a child situation. It's like a mother is taking care of the child. You can see in India, such kind of uh, the masters are taken care of by some people always. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you have several years after your awakening that you um, didn't go out? Yeah, yeah, it happened. It happened. The realization happened in 1994. Almost two years plus, I couldn't be able to move anywhere. You know, even a small sound of the pin falling on the ground looks like a big sound for me, very heavy. Even my own words was disturbance for me, too much sounding. So I kept quiet all the time inside my room. I never used to move with the people, keeping away myself. All these things happened in my case also. It was so delicate situation. There were days I have forgotten to eat also. 
somebody has to remind please he okay let us go all these things like that it took many many months for me even after that i have not moved freely i couldn't be able to move because the transport sound and all these things are very heavy for me i couldn't manage all the beef and cars and the so man, you know india you know india at least here in america nobody is making such a horn sound in india, <laughs> in india you see always horn sound horn sound do, 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 do like this is too much no. so always i was aloof for aloof with the very limited people the very beginning only very few people around me they were around me almost 10 years or so just i was moving with only 10 to 15 people that's all they they take me carefully here and there that's all i was talking to them only at the very beginning you know very recently only i started traveling especially some 4 years before i had a satsang in tiruvannamalai you know tiruvannamalai the land of ramana maharishi i was holding a satsang there uh, mostly westerners were there in my satsang that's my first satsang for westerners um in that satsang one lady her name is uh, diana she was there after my satsang she wanted to meet me personally she came and met me she had some questions personal questions personal session i was talking to her some she is totally connected to me in this satsang time and she told me that uh, if i am inviting you to europe will you able to come i told her i never seen airport in my life time <laughs> until the, until the age of my 59 i said i have never gone out of india i do not know how to come to europe and all she said i will take her up everything He pleased to come to Greece. I said, "Okay, I'll try." So she arranged my ticket and all the comforts and everything. You know the visa, all these papers and all. She prepared. She invited me. So Greece was the first country. It's the first country I visited over there. Crete Island. There is an island in the Mediterranean Sea. So that's the first landing place for me. I landed over there. 48 days I stayed there in the island. In different places she organized some meetings and such and so all these things. This is how it started actually. You know, for the past four years or so only I am traveling. Nowadays I am traveling a lot. Even even though I am traveling, you know, you, uh, you must have seen here also. I am not moving anywhere. I am in my room. <laughs> I love to be in my room. You know, even this sound is a very house area. It's a heavy sound for me. <laughs> you know, uh, this kind of uh, inner thing is going on that I think uh, people must understand. They are not the same anymore. You know, their sense organs are entirely different. So sharp, it is very sharp. They need to be handled like a flower. in a delicate way i think these are the that's why i yesterday i was talking about her i know how to be taken care about her she is so tender i saw she came for the personal sitting you know we couldn't able to talk much she started crying i said okay then you need not speak anything now okay i understand you please take her off this side like that it's such a delicate situation. <laughs> well, we uh, definitely felt very honored to be able to be a place that could be safe for her. Yeah. Uh, I, I am really thankful. Please do. Please do. It it it's a help for others also. That silent energy will be of great help for many people. So do people's mental noise Yeah. Can I get to you at first too? Yeah. Somebody's around you and they're yeah. they're just thinking and yeah. worrying and they yeah. have all that, that stuff. Yeah. That will also affect. Yeah. 
very much. It will, it will be too much. You know. That's why, you know, you can, in, in India you can watch all these things. When people are approaching a master, they don't speak. They are so quiet, quietly sitting nearby, not even questioning. The approach is totally different. You can watch it. Yeah. It's not that it is a discipline or something. It's a respect or something. Nothing to do with discipline or respect or anything. They are in such a difficult way. You know, there is a master in India. He has never even come out of his ashram. He is very famous all over the world. He never even come out. He always sends his representation. He is always in his room, giving darshans, sending his energy to the world. He is almost like a, sitting inside the cave. <laughs> That's why many masters, you know, they don't even visit, they don't even travel. They sit in one place, maybe inside the cave, and the things happening, the energy work, it's an energy work. There's no need to talk even. Sitting silently near the realized one is enough. There's no need, not even talking to them. Things happen. That's why some masters, they don't even travel. They sit inside and things happen. Thank you very much. Um, well, we have our class to go to, our <laughs> blessings, but, yes. but is there anything else you would like to say? That any message, any anything to, to the world? Yeah, of course, I would like to share that uh, instead of saying that I have this problem, bad problem, health problem, or financial problem, social problem, relationship problem, all these things. And also, instead of saying the world is facing so many problems, all these things, instead of focusing on all these kind of negative things, I think better we can focus on ourselves. That will give the solution for all these kind of problems. Problem may be many, but the solution is always one. Just stay in ourself. This is my message. Staying in self will give clarity to sort out many problems quickly and easily. So one can live a happy life. Once a person lives happily, the whole family is happy. When the whole families are happy, naturally the nation is happy. When the nations are happy, naturally the world is happy. So simple thing is that we in the self, realizing oneself that we are love. Only love exists, nothing else existing. This is my message. Only love. Yes, only love. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So much. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Om Shanti. Anbagi, anbatra agam thannil, halai katrin anbure, anbutrin adirvedave, agami me agalaga, arivatra lagalada, arivanda arul paye, arulatma uljodiye. ஆத்மாதிதாவே நம குருவே நம 
ಓಂ ತಾರಹ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣೇ ನಮಃ ಮನಮೇ ನಮಃ ಆಧಾರ ಮದಿಲ್ ನಿಂತು 